Have you ever wanted to be part of a research project? Well, in the age of the internet, it's easier than ever, and you can put your spit to work. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and this is a segment of DNA. Today, I want to tell you about the DNA recombination project and how you can be a part of it. Recombination is one of the processes that ensures genetic diversity throughout a population. Now, your parents have two sets of chromosomes, one from each one of their parents. Now, before they pass on a set of chromosomes to you, portions of those chromosomes shuffle together so that the set of chromosomes you get is unique from anybody else and contains parts of each one of your grandparents. This is called recombination, or sometimes crossover. You can see in the image to my right, myself and my three brothers, and what parts of our chromosomes came from our paternal grandparents. The colored portion is from our grandfather, and the gray portions are from our grandmother. One of the great benefits of DNA testing is the creation of millions of real-life data points for research. Now we know that we receive 50% of our DNA from each one of our parents. And then each generation after that, the amount of DNA you receive from each of your grandparents and your great grandparents is approximately halved. But how close to being halved are we individually? We haven't really been able to answer until now. Blaine Bettinger has a project called the Shared CM Project that shows the range of CM or the range of DNA that we can actually expect to share with different relationships. And this has been very helpful for people who are trying to figure out how different matches could be related to them. Now, Kitty Cooper also has a project called the 25% Relationships. And this is looking at grandparents, aunts, uncles, and half siblings and how their DNA is different even though we share 25% with each one of these relationships. Now, the information for these projects is crowdsourced, meaning you are the ones who submit it. And the DNA recombination project is no different. My goal is to gather approximately 500 to 1,000 grandparent-grandchild pairs and be able to answer some questions based on that data. Question number one, what is the recombination rate for each of the different chromosomes? Question number two, how do these recombination rates differ between males and females? Question number three, how do these recombination rates differ between our maternal chromosomes and our paternal chromosomes? Question number four, do closely related family groups have a significant difference in the recombination rate compared to non-related family groups? Question number five, and probably the most important one, is can this information be used to help find the common ancestor between us and our distant cousins that we match with. Now, if you have tested with any of the major companies, you can upload that data to GEDmatch. And in order to participate in the DNA recombination project, all I need is a few simple bits of information. First, I need the GEDmatch kit number for a grandchild. Second, I need the GEDmatch kit number for a grandparent of that grandchild. Third, I need to know what gender the grandchild is, whether it's male or female. Fourth, I need to know whether this is on the paternal side or the maternal side as far as the grandparent. We have created a form that you can use to submit this information. And if you look in the description below, there'll be a link to that form. Now you can submit as many grandparent grandchild pairs as you have information available. And the more information we get, the better the analysis can be. Now, so far from the people that I match with and I've been in contact with, I've gathered about a hundred different grandparent-grandchild relationships. Let me show you what some of this data is starting to look like. Now, this first graph here is the frequency of recombinations. And this is something that has actually been looked at a few times before. What it's showing is it's showing that there's a difference between the maternal and the paternal recombinations. So in other words, the chromosomes you get from your mother have more recombinations than the chromosomes you get from your father. And there's a little bit of overlap between these rates, but for the most part, maternal rates are about 1.6 to 1.8 times 
the rates for paternal chromosomes. Now this second graph is the number of chromosomes that had no recombinations. So recombination doesn't always happen. Sometimes there are no recombinations and you actually inherit a chromosome that's identical to one of the chromosomes that one of your parents had. Now I am pretty proud of the fact that on this graph, the farthest most point is actually represented by one of my daughters. In other words, more than half of the chromosomes she received from me are identical to my chromosomes. They were not recombined. Now that's just a really fun factoid. Finally, this last graph. One of the things I've looked at is what's the maximum number of recombinations on any particular chromosome. And what you can see here is that for paternal chromosomes, the maximum is really about four, but majority of people's paternal chromosomes only have three or maybe two recombinations. However, for maternal chromosomes, they have a lot more, all the way up to seven recombinations. All of this data so far shows definite differences between paternal and maternal chromosomes. And that's something that we actually knew beforehand. So what we're hoping to do with this project is to be able to gather some more data and see whether or not there's different patterns that can be used to take advantage of these known differences as well as any other differences that we may discover to help identify where common ancestors are on some of our distant matches. We'll be posting updates on our YouTube channel as we gather more information and as we have a chance to analyze it. So stay tuned for information on the DNA Recombination Project and be sure to go to the link in the description and submit your information so that you can be a part of it as well. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that it can reach more viewers. Don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss another episode of Family History Fanatics.